Kevin Keegan tells a story about playing for England at Wembley against Holland in 1977. The state of the England team fitted. The state of the nation, heading for recession and decline. This was a period when England failed to qualify for two successive World Cup finals. Though it is often forgotten that these were 16-team World Cups, where only one qualified from the group. So it was not quite as awful as failing to qualify today, Dutch football by contrast was setting the world alight. England might have reigned in 1966 but the 1970s were all about Rhinus Michels, Johan Cruyff and total football. Two World Cup finals were scant reward for revolutionising the game but as Cruyff would always point out, Everyone remembers the 1974 team and downloads their YouTube clips. Few outside of Germany bother to do so for the winners, West Germany. The England-Holland game from 1977 was only a few minutes old when the great Johnny Rep turned to Keegan. Hey Kevy, said Rep. This is the worst England side I've seen. You have problems. Trevor Brooking was also playing that night, so England had some players at least. We hardly got a touch, said Brooking. I was in awe. Cruyff was in the Holland team that night and he was the best I ever played against. Now England in 2018 are hardly the Holland of the Cruyff era. Not even close. Even so, you could have forgiven one of the England team turning to Virgil van Dijk and reversing the rep line, this is the worst Dutch side I've seen, you have problems. England weren't great. They were good enough though. Just as Bulgaria have been of late, and the Czech Republic, and Turkey, and Iceland. England, at least, can relate to that. But you read about the travails of Dutch football from afar and in theory it's easy to understand how the decline of the Robin van Persie, Arjen Robin, Wesley Snader generation has left a void. But this is still a nation that made the World Cup semi-final four years ago in the final in 2010, seeing them close up, it's easier to understand how they have failed to qualify for two successive tournaments. There's little to inspire from Memphis to Pi to Boss Dust or Quincy Proms. Patrick van Aanholt is a decent professional but not the kind of player you associate with a Dutch national team. Virgil van Dijk and Jorginho Wijnaldum provide a foundation and Stefan de Frey is a good defender. But the cheers for Donny van de Beek when he finally came on in the 89th minute suggests that the 20-year-old Ajax midfielder will carry a disproportionate creative burden in years to come. Mati used to league that 18 must overcome early errors with the national team to prove himself a fellow traveller with De Beek in this new generation. But the sheer lack of fluidity and ideas was sad to behold. An average England team moved the ball better, played out from the back with more confidence and eventually found a finish, which Holland, a free header from dust to part, rarely looked like doing. It's hard to fathom how the country which pretty much wrote the book on nurturing young players could turn out this way. There are rarely easy answers. Feyenoord, PSV and Ajax still have largely Dutch squads, though there are more foreign players than previously and so maybe development and opportunities aren't what they once were. There have been lean times before. Holland failed to qualify for tournaments from 1982 to 1986. You wondered whether the revolution had been a temporary state of affairs. The return of Michels as coach and the joy of Marco van Basten, Ruud Gullit and Frank Rijkaard propelled a new wave of Dutch creativity and Euro 88 remains their only major trophy. Current boss Ronald Koeman was part of that group. Quite good he was too. They were supplemented by the brilliant Ajax team of the 1990s, primarily Dennis Bergkamp but also Patrick Kluivert and Mark Overmars. Pretty much England's finest hour in tournament football since 1970 is putting four past that team in one of their rare missteps. At Euro 96, the failure to qualify in 2002 and the lackluster 2006 display was then put right by the Van Persie Robin Snader, even if 2010 became an expedient betrayal of the Cruyff way. And certainly Louis van Gaal's unique coaching skills were papering over cracks by 2010. David Winner, writer of the excellent Brilliant Orange, which charts the rise of Dutch football says the decline is a familiar cycle of revolutionaries losing their fire. I like to use an analogy, he told Thyscore.com last year. The British had the Industrial Revolution first. They invented railways, big iron production and all that, and were then thoroughly outstripped industrially. Other nations copied and improved on what the British had done. That is his thesis. Essentially Holland's unique selling point, attacking full backs, fluid centre halves, forwards dropping into midfield, has passed. Even England teams pretty much attempt to play that way. If you want to see the influence of Dutch football, look to Barcelona or Spain. Even Germany at times. Holland hasn't moved on or innovated. Saturday March 24 marks the anniversary of Cruyff's tragic early death. It seems a poignant time to be reflecting on the latest decline in Dutch fortunes. Maybe at times they have been too beholden to his mighty influence. However, how they could do with the vision and intelligence of a young Cruyff now, both on and off the pitch.